So today I'm going to talk about how to run old DOS games under your Windows 8 system. Now this really doesn't differ too much from the uh, Windows 7 or other previous versions of Windows, except the fact we're going to cover how to put a tile on your desktop that has the icon for your particular DOS game that will automatically launch a em DOS emulator that uh, lets you run old DOS games. So in order to do that, we're going to go over here to the desktop and we're going to go to the computer. Now I've already downloaded a program that is in uh, the description for this video. Uh, DOS box, but uh, first we're going to talk about other programs. For example, if I go to the Microsoft game and I go to Flight Simulator 9, okay, you can see I can pin that directly to the start menu. And that's because it's an installed program. Any program that gets installed using the regular Windows install, where it gets installed in your programs, you, you should be able to find uh, the actual software for it. So if I go over here to the programs and I say, uh, Look here, and if I go down to Flight Simulator, actually it's Microsoft uh, Flight Simulator, there. There's a Combat Flight Simulator, the one I was talking about, that it gets installed. Regular DOS programs don't use this to install. They don't get installed here as a DOS program because they don't use the, the Windows install. They're just too old. They predate it. So what does that mean? Well, it means you can't create a tile that actually points to a DOS program. But I'm going to show you how you can actually without extra software. So now if you want to, if, let's, let's talk a little bit about how you can run DOS uh, within Windows, any version of Windows. I'm going to the command line. I did it with the Windows R, the Windows key in R, and then it brings up the command line. And I said CMD, and now we're virtually in DOS. And uh, let's talk a little bit about that. There's a lot of talk about virtualization, how you can run Windows, an earlier version of Windows underneath Windows because machines are so fast. Or if you have a Mac, you can run Windows, virtualization. Well, we're using DOS commands here to change the directory to the games and everything. For example, I'm going here and changing it to this program, and I'm going to say, look, here's the directory. I'm going to look at it, and there's a list of all the files and everything. And you'll see that these files are the same files here that we have over here. If we scroll down to the zip files down here, you'll see that these files here uh, match up with the files there. So you look at the same exact place, one through a DOS window, the command line, and one through a uh, regular Windows interface. So what, what can we do with this? Well, what's, the, what's the importance about it? Well, what it means is, is that if I wanted to run something for DOS, if I came just here and I just wanted to run it, something, I would have to, I could sit there and type in the directory and the program name. If I change directory, for example, to Galaxian here, and then I run the game Galaxian, uh, Galaxian, and it tells me an error. It says I cannot run this because it doesn't have all the other things, the, the virtual PC exactly. It's really just a DOS prompt. It's a command line prompt. It, it's not really a, a whole PC running with extra memory assigned to it and everything like that. If I click it here directly, this app can't run in your PC. Go to your software manufacturer. Anyway, the point of it is, is that you need something more than that. And that's where DOSBox comes in at. So we're going to go back here to uh, DOSBox. And we're we're going to take a look at uh, it right here. And you first download it and extract it. And then you, then after you've done that, it goes ahead and just puts it in a directory. It doesn't do the install. It, it, it just puts it right there on your PC. So here we are. We're in the DOSBox directory. And you'll see here's DOSBox.exe. And it has a config file. And if you look about it, it talks all about the configuration. And there's a hundred different configurations, like full screen, true or false. There's sound card settings. There's uh, size of window settings. There's machine speed settings all that it pretty much does it a good job all on its own although the machine speed is probably the one where if it can't detect the game uh, that you're going to try and run you're sort of lost there it's, it's this machine will run a thousand times faster than originally intended but there's a way to get around that with certain keystrokes and we'll get to that in a minute but if you look here there's cpu you know it's, uh, here's where we talk about how to uh speed it up or slow down it's controlled uh f11 control f uh, 12. It tries to do an auto detect, but forget that. Uh, mixer, it's talking about devices. Here's the sound mixer and all that stuff. By the way, these are a lot of things you used to have to do manually years ago uh, to configure your stuff to run. Uh, there's MIDI uh, integration as well for MIDI files. Uh, one of the major uh, cards years ago would also have, besides their sound drive, would have a MIDI interface that you could hook up to. And if we go down a little further, there's Sound Blaster. The de facto card years ago and still is uh, pretty popular out there for high-end stuff and everything it was a sound blaster 16 though back then 
and you had to actually change jumper on your cards to set all these uh, the uh, IRQ and all that stuff to correctly and everything. Uh, Gravis Ultrasound was another one, but they've chose to emulate here in uh, the uh, DOS box. So there's you can use your PC speaker. All these different things uh, are configurable if you want to get into it. But it pretty much leave it the way it is and everything. It'll detect joysticks, all that. Serial ports. A lot of PCs don't have serial ports anymore, uh, but it'll do that as well. But what we really want to get down to is, is after we talk about the memory here, it also emulates certain types of memory that older games used. Uh, and we get down to the very, very bottom, and you'll see that we have this auto exec, which is, this is how to mount your drive. In other words, this emulator ne needs to point to a different drive. In this case, it's going to be the games directory under DOS is going to mount and it's going to pretend like it's a C drive so that we can get the stuff. So besides the memory and all that, we're going to talk, uh, we're going to see how it points to that so we can run our games as if they're on sitting on a C drive. So now we're going to go ahead and run DOSBox and you'll see it comes up and it has this nice little, inner, you know, black screen that tells you a little bit about how to speed up and slow down stuff, uh, but it shows how you mounted the drive so that now you're looking at the same directory as we talked about here, that DOS and DOS like we talked about earlier. So again, I'm going to go ahead here and say, okay, now that I'm looking at C-Drive, I'm going to verify what I'm looking at. So if I, again, if I do a directory listing, it should match what's on the right-hand side over here. So if I come over here and I say directory slash P for pausing for pagination, I see them in the old structure. Um, it shows exactly the same names, uh, except for the ones that are longer than eight characters. The old DOS only could have eight character file names. So that you'll see that ampersand or that uh, tilde one or two next to the name. But basically, you'll see the same exact software here that you see over there. So what does that mean to us? Well, we're going to now go ahead and run some of those games within DOSBox. And the first one we're going to do is Galaxia. Uh, it's an old uh, Space Invaders uh, game type game. It came out after Space Invaders and did some improvements. So if I run Galaxian, you'll see here that it's uh, running fine within uh, DOSBox. It's running really fast, though, so I'm going to shut it down real quick. And that's because DOSBox didn't understand the speed automatically, so you're going to have to do it yourself. Well, we're going to be able to do that by running a uh, the, the program and pressing the F11 to slow it down. But what's really important, we're going to talk about how to run this from a link rather than having to go to DOSBox and type in Galaxian for each one of your games. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to right-click on DOSBox, okay? We're going to say... Uh, pin the start we could do that but then we have just an icon or link directly to that so we're going to instead we're going to do what's called a shortcut the old same old shortcut you're used to seeing and everything so when we right click on it we'll have a shortcut that we're going to be able to spin and it's very important uh, that we're going to be able to do this because we will be able to modify the icon so if we go over here and we say create shortcut you'll see that it creates this the first thing we're going to do after we do this is so we don't get confused because we're going to have maybe dozens of these. We're going to rename that and this is going to be our Galaxian shortcut. So it's going to say, oh, this is really a shortcut to DOSBox where we're naming it Galaxian. So now what are we going to do? Well, we're going to go over in the properties and you'll see right here, here's the line of instructions of the computer that says, oh, go run DOSBox.exe. Well, we're going to add some parameters that DOSBox is designed to take advantage of. The dash C is the command. So if we go in here and we say dash C Galaxian uh, directory and then the Galaxian and we say OK, theoretically this is going to go ahead and run Galaxian as soon as we do it. We're also going to change the icon. So if we click here and say change icon, you'll see that it has the DOS box icon. Well, we're going to change that as well because it gets that icon from the DOS box exe file. It's embedded in that file. But what you can do is you can actually browse for other icon files. You just click the browse button here and you can go find other different programs and everything that have it. Now you may or may not have any. Now what I did is I went out to the internet and downloaded one. If you click over here and you say, oh, forget just looking at ICO files or EXE files. If you click here and you go down to all files, you'll see some of the other ones. Now I downloaded this GIF over here, but then I used Paint to convert it and because GIF isn't accessible as an icon so you can't use that but so we go down here to paint and we open it up and we say oh look I want to save as a BMP file because a BMP file Windows will recognize that as an icon I already have one here that I already did but I'm gonna go ahead and overwrite it and say okay boom and do that
So now I have this BMP file. So now if I take that file and I say that's going to be my file, you notice it's now the icon for this. So if I click on OK and I click on OK again, you'll see that the Galaxian shortcut, which is really DOS box with the command line, is now uh, has that as a icon. And if I say click pin to start menu, guess what? Now I have a doo -doo -doo. Gla oops, I got two of them because I already done this earlier. So I'm going to delete these. And let's do that again. Let's go back over here. And I wanted to delete that again because just to make sure I don't have uh, it already uh, pointed somewhere else. So if I click on this, and I say pin to start. And I come over here. Doo -doo, and there we are, Galaxians. Theoretically now, when I click on this, it will run DOSBox with the command line parameters that will start up Galaxian. So uh, let's see if I'm, I'm right. So you're going to see how we're going to be able to go out here and do the uh, a link like this for every single DOS game that's going to point to DOSBox.oexe. It's going to use that shortcut to send it a parameter which is going to launch the proper game. So you don't have to have a whole bunch of different copies of DOSBox. You don't have to do anything. You just simply uh, click on it and it will launch the game. And as we do that, you'll see that Galaxian comes up here uh, in the background. It has all the normal instructions and things like that. Uh, and then uh, it actually even emulates sound. You'll hear it here in a, in a minute in the background and everything. Uh, it'll actually do everything you want to do. It's running at a thousands of times faster than you want. I'm pressing F11 to slow it down. It, we're down to 254 cycles. I can increase it a little bit, uh, trying to make it uh, playable and everything. Until you find, uh, if you're on 1,000 cycles, uh, it seems to be close to the original DOS speed and everything on my particular machine. Now, it depends upon your machine, but there you go. You can start playing your game and everything within a DOS box from the uh, tile on your desktop. No need to type things in, no need to do anything. Once you have it set up, you can play it anytime you click on it and everything. So that's Galaxian, and we're going to cover some other DOS programs here, uh, including some LucasArts that doesn't use DOSBox, but you're going to be able to use some other programs that are very popular to run uh, within from your Windows from your tile desktop. Mm -hmm.